Hi, it's Miss Pam from the Andes Public Library. It's Wednesday, October 14th, and welcome to our story time today. Well, tis the season. We've got some books about the Leaf Man by Lewis Erlert. And then we have a book called Guess What by Mem Fox. Broommates by Margie Palatini, illustrated by Howard Fine, and Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson and XL Shep. So, we'll start today with Leaf Man. Maybe, oh, look, can you see his mouth and his eyes? <laughs> Maybe, oh, look. <laughs> there was a surprise in the book. <laughs> Oh, nice. There's different kinds of maple leaves. Look at these are all different maples. Catalpa, oak, acorn, oak, acorn, oak. So these are all different oak trees. And sweet gum, ginkgo, honey locust. Oh. Leaf man used to live near me in a pile of leaves. But yesterday the wind blew Leaf Man away. He left no travel plans. The last time I saw him, he was headed east, past the chickens. Towards the marsh, over the ducks and geese, a Leaf Man's got to go where the wind blows. He blew over the fields of pumpkins and winter squash and flew over the turkey past potatoes carrots and cabbages and rows then he blew out of sight is he drifting west above the orchards or over the prairie meadows And past the spotted cows, well, a leaf man's got to go where the wind blows. Maybe leaf man's gliding on a lake breeze. Look, here's a turtle. Look at that. And a fish. They're made of leaves. Or flying along the river. Following butterflies going south. Well, a leaf man's got to go where the wind blows. Oh, you see all the butterflies they made out of the leaves? He might even be traveling north above leaves that look like him. Or flying over mountains with a flock of birds. <laughs> Have you seen the geese flying? They're going south for the winter. When leaf man looks down on earth, is he lonesome for home? <sighs> this I do know, where a leaf man will land, only the wind knows. So listen for a rustle in the leaves. Maybe you'll find a leaf man waiting to go home with you. <laughs> Here's elm and birch and cottonwood and fig and a poplar tree and a beech tree and an elm tree, hawthorn trees. Well, I hope that book gave you some ideas in case you have to do a leaf decoration project. All right, let's put our leaf back into the leaf book. All right, so now we have some witchy stories. Guess written by Mem Fox, illustrated by Vivian Goodman. Far away from here lives a crazy lady called Daisy O'Grady. Is she tall? Guess. Do you think she's tall? I don't know. It's hard to tell you. Yes! She's tall. Is she thin? Guess. Yes. Does she wear a long black dress? Guess. Yes. 
Is she fond of animals? What do you think? Yes. Yes. What do you see there? Oh my gosh. Oh, but I see a lot of um, animals' heads on the wall. Hmm. Has she got a cat that's really sleek and black? Yes. Yes. Does she sometimes wear a hat? Yes. Yes. Is it as black as her dress and her cat? Yes. Yes. Does she like cooking? Yes. Yes. Does she mix rat's tails, toenails, and dead lizard scales? Yes. Yes. Does she have a broomstick? Yes. Yes. Does she like to fly at night? Yes. <laughs> I put a picture of her outhouse. <laughs> this is a funny book. <gasps> yes. Is she a cursing, cackling, cranky old witch? Yes. Yes. Some people say she's really mean. But guess what? She's not. <laughs> oh, seems like kind of an interesting witch, didn't it? Okay, Roommates by Margie Palatini, illustrated by Howard Fine. Look, they're both in the same bed, and one's got her feet in the other one's face. Your brother and sister ever do that? It happens. <laughs> Rich the witch was grouchy, grumpy, and pooped. Getting ready for her big howl -a day party had just plain tuckered her out. Yikes, she squeaked, eyeing herself in the witch-watching mirror. I'd better get some beauty sleep. Try 20 years, the mirror cackled. <laughs> With a yawn and a yank, Gritch pulled on her jammies, shooed out the bed bugs, and headed for Betty Bye. She was already sawing Z's and counting lamb chops when, wouldn't you know, yeah, the doorbell screamed. What a nightmare. Get your thump and thumb off of that buzzard's button, you bell ringing busybody, grumbled Gritch. Scoot, scram, ski daddle. <laughs> ski daddle nothing, sister, came the call from the other side of the knocker. Yoo hoo, guess what? Guess who just flew in from Malibu? The door flew open with a windy whoosh. The bell ringing busybody was none other than her saucy bossy sister, Mag the Hag. You're a fright for sore eyes, snorted Gritch. You could still scare the hair off of your hair yourself, sissy crack cackled her sister. I have a little mag lag, but I'm ready to party hearty. Ye gads, Gritch groaned. The party smarty isn't until tomorrow. No problemo, Meg sat out, sang out. I'll just bunk here tonight with you, broom mate. <laughs> Dat, drat, Gritch gritted her tooth. Having the hag come home for the holidays was not going to be a treat. The sisters just did not get along, no how, no way, not ever. They had fussed and feuded about anything and everything ever since they were little ghouls. Brooming with Mag was not going to be easy, even if it was just for one day. Gritch grumbled, that hag is always in my face, not to mention my space. Point these beauteous blinkers to a pillow, Broomy Mag called from the hall. Ma needs some shut-eye. The hag dropped with a plop, snuggled inside. Not too big, not too little, just right. Wrong, groused Gritch. Look who's sleeping in my bed, and I'm not talking Goldilocks. <laughs> well, here I am now, snorted Mag, lathering up her face with fright cream. Just stay on your own side, you bed hog and hag, Gritch groused and crawled under the bed. Gladly, you old sleeping bag, muttered Mag with a yank, but now you have all the covers. Gritch whined, and like always, you took all the lumps. 
Ooh, you want lumps, do you? Meg grabbed her pillow. I don't remember. Do you like one lump or two? Ding, ding, ding. The girls came out swinging. Feathers started to fly. They finally knocked each other out during round three. I'm telling mummy on you, snored Meg, spitting feathers. I'm telling on you, snoozed Gritch with a head full of lumps. <laughs> the next morning, the broommates both got up on the wrong side of the bed. They were already squabbling and squawking before the first sip of hot flea. Decorating for the party was a disaster. Gritch wanted the spiders dangling. Meg wanted the webs tangling. Everything got tied up in knots. Mag wanted the pumpkin squished. Gritch wanted the pumpkin squashed. Squish, squash, splat. And there was a dust brawl. Clearly dreary, you are a flop at the mop, declared Mag. You're the bust when it comes to dust, sister, coughed Gritch. Things really got down and dirty. Dust bunnies were hopping all over the place. <laughs> Mag brushed herself off with a hearty harump. I'm going to do some spelling, she said with a wave of her wand. Mummy always said I was the best speller in the family. You get a grip, muttered Gritch. I can spell anything better than you. Poof, no you can't. Poof, yes I can. Poof, no you can't. Poof, poof, crash. Uh-oh, said Gritch, stumbling over broken spells. Mummy's going to be mad at you. Mag sputtered and stomped off to the kitchen. Fooey, I'm going to make my rat tip tail tooey. Gritch hurried to tie on her apron first. It was almost the witching hour, and her guests would be arriving at any moment. Your tooey is a bunch of hooey. My brouhaha would be the howl of the party. The girls glared at each other, squinted, grinned, and cackled. Cooking contest. A squirm of worm, a slush of mush, a bit of spit. Voila, delish, said Mag, stirring her stew. Yes, your rat tail tooey is terrible. Terribly tasty, said Gritch, laughing up a spoonful. But Mummy always said my brouhaha was absolute perfection. Mag held her nose. She slurped. She shrugged. Eh, could use a hint of hee-hee. Gritch almost choked on her ha-ha. My ha-ha needs hee-hee. Ha! Hee-hee, repeated Mag with a burp. You could throw in some ho-ho, too. Ho-ho, too, said Gritch. How about if I throw in you? <laughs> Oh, yowled Mag. Gritch doubled over in a cackle. Yes, ma'am, just what her brouhaha needed. One big old howl. Mag came up for air. Hardy har har. Ho, 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 Gritch chuckled. Then she sipped and said, oh, no, no, no. Kerplunk. Knock, knock. The broommates bubbled up from the brew, blubbered, gasped, mummy. Their mummy was not at all pleased and looked very unraveled. Gritch shriveled and sh shrivered and shook. Max quivered and quaked. Mummy was silent. Very, very silent. Then she gave the surprised, soggy sisters a hug and called out, Trick or treat! Gritch looked at Mag and giggled, Trick? Mag looked at Gritch and chuckled, Treat? Mummy laughed. That's what I like to see. Sharing, scaring, and no problems. The sisters promised to be on their best beastly behavior. Naughty but nice, ordered Mummy. Now let's party. Remember, Mummy knows best. <laughs> All right. So our last book for today is The Room on the Broom. And by the way, we do have a video here at the library that goes along with this book, should you want to take it out. All right. See, by Julia Donaldson and Alex Axel Scheffler. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. I feel like we skipped a page. Oh, yes, here we go. <laughs> now we're going to start. <laughs> the witch had a cat and a hat, a hat that was black and long ginger hair and a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat. When the wind blew so wildly, it blew off the hat. Down, cried the witch as they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head, I'm a dog as king as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? 
Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail, and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held on to her hat, but away blew the bow from her braid, just like that. Ooh. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird in the bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, and then said as the witch tied her braid in the bow, I am a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the bird shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky and the back of beyond, the witch clucked her bow but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, out from a pond, lit a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely and said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak, I am a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and the broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog and down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I'm a dragon as mean as can be and which with french fries tastes delicious to me. No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with a glint in his eyes and said, Just this once, I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was a tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered, and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl, and a growl, and a croak, and a shriek. It dripped, and it squelched, and it strode from the ditch, and it said to the dragon, Buzz off, that's my witch. The dragon drew back, and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered, I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. And then down flew the bird, and down jumped the frog, down climbed the cat, and phew, said the dog. And thank you, thank you, thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, Find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone threw them all, and the witch stirred them well, and while she stirred, she muttered a spell, Iggity ziggity zaggity zoom, then out rose <laughs> a truly magnificent broom, with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Look, <laughs> there's the frog back there. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed our stories today and enjoy your fall. And I hope you get to do some raking of the leaves, the beautiful leaves before they're all gone and um, jump and have fun. And um, I will see you next week. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.